how to never diet again if you're eating right for your hormones. So we know that working out um, specific to our cycle is something that can help our body with balancing out our hormones. It can help us burn more fat. It can help us with our metabolism. Overall, if we're exercising in sync with our cycle, we're going to start feeling good. Um, and it's going to lead us to having, you know, our body flowing in its natural rhythm. So I want to now hop into nutrition and hormones. So how can we eat right for our cycle? And I love talking about this because it really makes such a big difference. Um, you know, PMS symptoms at times can be debilitating. They can, you know, be draining. They can throw your entire week off track. Um, whether it's, you know, constantly bloating and cramps, fatigue, your cravings, typically carbs, uh, you know, poor skin, really, really fluctuating mood swings, you know, anything, you name it. So, you know, as a female, you probably have been conditioned to think, okay, well, two weeks out of the month or are just going to suck. Um, or seven days out of the month, you know, it's just going to suck because, you know, you know how you feel typically before or during your period. And you may have even been conditioned to just think, you know, you have to just live like that for the rest of your life because this is what girls have to deal with. Because this is what we're always told, especially when we're, you know, going to doctors and just all over. Like you always know, oh, okay, PMS, deal with it, right? So the good news is once you have a plan that is structured to sync with your hormones nutritionally and physically, um, along with, you know, a few other things, you can actually have control on how you feel each month. Yes, it's pretty awesome. Um, so you don't have to always be miserable during that time. And you can really learn how to maximize during certain times of the month. <clears throat> And really learn when to give yourself grace during other times so that you're not always beating yourself up and self-critical for no reason. So let's dive in because I really want to talk about nutrition and our hormones and why is this so important. Well, one, if we're eating foods that are going to exasperate our PMS symptoms or cause our cycle to be late or missed or lead to hormonal imbalances, <clears throat> I have a tickle in my throat apparently. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to, you know, kind of change our eating habits to make us feel more alive and thriving and balanced during that time? Well, we actually have control to do that. So first, let's understand, you know, what happens to our body during different phases of our cycle when it comes to nutrition and the foods that we're eating along with our exercise. So why does PMS happen? You may ask, you know, um, you know, I just want to touch on, I guess, cravings first, because cravings are a real thing. Um, and when you get closer to your period, I'm sure you notice that you're craving a lot. And typically, you know, um, as you get closer to your day one, your estrogen levels drop, which causes a drop in serotonin levels, which then spikes up your cravings for simple carbs. So if we were to grab something, you know, loaded with salt, so, you know, potato chips, for example, um, that is, you know, what you're craving. So it satisfies you for the time being, but it actually leads your body to retaining more water and to counteract all the additional sodium that is in your bloodstream. That's actually going to be the contributing, the contributing factor to your bloat. So let's take this even a step further because during this phase, you may be grabbing, you know, from more cookies and sweets and treats. And although it curbs your craving um, temporarily, it's also followed with a drastic decline in your blood sugar levels, your energy, you feel more tired. So the same way that I made a disclaimer during our cardio talk, I was not saying that cardio is bad, but when we choose to do cardio, that's what really could give us a negative outcome. So the same goes for our nutrition. So I'm the first to say that, you know, I enjoy cookies. I love cookies, sweets. You know, I enjoy foods like that. But when you enjoy them, when you enjoy them is really key, especially if you're trying to prevent <clears throat> PMS symptoms like mood swings. I used to get really bad mood swings. Um, if you're irritable, anxious, um, and even if you deal with a lot of cravings. So when we eat more simple carbs around that time of our cycle, we actually cause a roller coaster ride with our blood sugar levels, which is what causes 
all the negative consequences we have to deal with. So the good news is, there's always good news, um, the same way certain foods exasperate our PMS symptoms during certain times of the month, there are also foods that calm our PMS symptoms. So vitamin D, calcium-rich foods, um, they've been shown to reduce, you know, PMS in women who, you know, have micronutrient deficiencies. And if you're getting that in your diet, you'll realize that your PMS symptoms will be reduced, if not any. So when you eat the right foods for each phase, it not only helps you for that phase, but it also sets you up for success for the upcoming phase. So depending on the ability of um, how certain foods metabolize estrogen, how they support progesterone production, um, and specifically how they stabilize blood sugar levels, that will be uh, the determining factor of what proteins, what grains, what veggies, what fruits you should be eating depending on where you're at in your cycle. So when you learn how to eat and exercise specific to your cycle, you really never have to diet again because your body will be able to stay in sync. It'll be able to operate in its natural rhythm and that's really finding balance with your health and all of your results. So I'm not gonna go into this too far today because I know there's a lot of information already, but um, this is also the case for, you know, women who are in perimenopause and menopause. So there are a list of things, you know, women deal with when changing phases in their life from having a cycle to going to perimenopause to menopause. So your diet choices during these phases will have a huge impact on your hormonal function and how the symptoms that come along with it. So you know, with food, you can actually transform your experience and the shift from phase to phase doesn't have to be as bad as everyone says it is. So again, you just have to make sure you're eating right for that phase. Um, and, you know, I know this is a lot of information, so I'll definitely touch on that, you know, in another video. Um, but these topics are really my favorite because I have seen firsthand how much of an impact eating and exercising face specifically can really just transform your hormone health, the way you feel month to month. Um, it also lets all of your effort at the gym, you know, pay off and your workouts and the way you do things feel easier. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video next week. I'm definitely going to be sharing, you know, what foods you should be focusing on, um, what foods you should be eating in sync with your cycle at what times, um, because there's a lot to cover there. So tomorrow, join me for how we can get fit even if we have no time. So before I go, I want to um, give you the opportunity to join my free seven-day challenge. If you've been following these videos, you've been following me for a little bit, and you're like, okay, I really need to make a step. I need to make a change. If you're someone who's struggling with finding enough time in order to reach your weight loss goals, my seven-day challenge makes it easy for you. It really simplifies things. So I will teach you seven principles that you need to jumpstart your metabolism, reduce your bloat, all while losing weight. I do want to let you know my seven-day challenge is not a permanent solution by any means. It is a stepping stone to get you on the right track of reaching your goals, reaching your fitness goals, your health goals. And the cool part about it and why I designed it is because all you need is five minutes per day to complete the seven-day challenge. We get stuck because we overcomplicate things. And sometimes if you give a really quick view at my challenge, you'll be like, wow, this is too simple. It's simple, but if you actually do it, you will see a result, which is why it's awesome because you can fire up your metabolism, you can start losing weight, you could reduce bloat with simple habits. So it is really life-changing. Um, and I've t added a ton of value in my seven-day challenge guide. You have recipes, workouts, you have my gut health ebook that helps you understand whether or not you have gut health imbalances. And if you do, how can you take the necessary steps to fix it um, and something that I also threw in there that my clients love is my supplement guide. So I always get asked, you know, what supplements should I be taking? Or, oh, I just ordered all these supplements. And so many people I find are wasting so much money just from good marketing. Um, and they're not taking things that are helping them feel better and make a difference. So that's why I included my free supplement guide in there to really teach you. I'm all about teaching you and educating you on what's best for you so that you can make the best decision. 
So I hope that you join me in my seven day challenge. I hope you share it and pass it along with your friends. You and your friends can do it as well. Go ahead and click the link below and above. Um, whichever is easier for you, type in your info with um, your email and then keep an eye out because you will be getting an email with details to follow. So join me tomorrow. I'm super excited to see you and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye now.